Thank you. Um, I'm here today to, to talk about AO Reader, a uh, remote sensing open source Python library. So I see uh, we have a full house today, so uh, I won't be, uh, uh, I hope you, are, you will have questions. Um, what you should expect from this talk is a, a bit of context, and then I will present the main features of AO Reader, and I will uh, show you some highlights of the project. Um, I will talk first about my company, which is named Ecube Certit. We are, we are a technological and service platform of Ecube Laboratory in University of Strasbourg. We have more than 35 years of experience of valorization and technological transfer in space techniques and earth observation applications. And we are producing geoinformation for lots of topics, but the most important one, and uh, the one that lead, lead, uh, lead it to a reader is the 24-7 rapid mapping service. So what we do, do we do, uh, what we do in uh, the rapid mapping service is that we are using remote sensing images that are mostly uh, tasked for us. Um, we are using multitude of sensors, um, both optical and radar, and uh, in order to extract various events, such as a volcano, uh, floors, a landslide, fire, earthquakes, and so on. And we are delivering them in rush mode. And all this in the Copernicus uh, Emergency Management Framework. I hope you heard of that. Um, it's the base of uh, uh, a lot of uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, data sets <laughs> for the validation layers. And we are also uh, part of the international charter. Here you can see two maps, just for the example. Um, when I'm saying we are using remote sensing images that are tasked for us, it means that um, we, are, uh, we are using like uh, archive data uh, zipped that we are downloading in the old way. So no, no, nothing about uh, you know, uh, stack and so on. So it, it's very, very old, old fashioned. Um, so um, we have this data on disk and we want to apply our algorithms on, the, on them. And we want to extract water, for example, uh, without any knowledge about what sensor it is. So this is one, one motivation behind a reader. It is to simplify and harmonize the use of satellite data uh, in order to make our code sensor agnostic. This is the main point. You, uh, you will see after that a, a use case, and I will explain that a bit. Um, but it's also a, a way to, uh, to update your, your algorithm with new sensors quite easily because the bricks that is dealing with data is not in your code, it's another library. And we had also a need of automatic pre-processing and a, a computation of spectral indices. Um, it, of course, also increases the reliability of our production tools because the, ma the maintenance and testing are simplified. We test the algorithm in one hand and the data loader in the other hand. And, of course, the code is more readable because when you get rid of all the ifs, if Sentinel-2, if Sentinel-3, if Sentinel-1, uh, uh, whatever, um, your code is just about uh, the data task and the data, man uh, and the data management is done in the library and yeah, it's easy. And we wanted to go a bit open source and community friendly, so we have a, a GitHub of course and a Twitter. What about the main feature of a reader? Um, it handles a lot of optical constellations, uh, like the free ones, classic Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, Landsat, and also the harmonized Landsat Sentinel. Um, but it also handles some commercial data that we can uh, face during activations in CUMS, uh, such as Planet, uh, Scope, SkySat, and so on, the Airbus One, Maxa, and some exotic ones that you may not have encounter encountered, like Vision One, Superview, or Geosat. But uh, when, for example, we want to extract water, <laughs> and it is cloudy. We need also to handle SAR data. So this is why we handle SAR in AO Reader. Um, when I say I'm handling SAR data, it's a bit false because it's, it's a snap that is handling for me. So it's just a wrapper around uh, the, this uh, software. But uh, we have uh, post-processing that yeah, delivers the data in the AO Reader format. 
So we are dealing with the Sentinel Watt, which is free, and also commercial SAR data. Um, the first step of a reader is to open the product, and for that, um, a reader automatically recognizes the data uh, which is uh, the, which is dealing with, and it will uh, open the data agnostically. What does it mean? It means that if you give a path like the Sentinel two, and you declare the a reader the reader of a reader, uh, you will have a product that is open from this path, and you will have in this case we will have a Sentinel-2 product. But if you give a Sentinel-1 path with the same line of code, it will open a Sentinel-1 uh, product. And what, do you, what, what can we do with this product? Um, you can load bands. For example, for spectral data, you can load uh, satellite bands, spectral bands. You can load spectral indices. If you give a DEM, it, you can load uh, a DEM band, which is uh, collocated over, over the, the, the band. And if the product gives clouds, it also can uh, load it from the, the, the masks. We have some specifications about this, its band. Uh, the, all the bands are auto-rectified, so if the product is, for example, a Pleiad, which is not uh, auto-rectified, it will do that for you. But be careful because uh, a player data auto rectified by JDAL, uh, it will, yeah, maybe not be uh, exactly where you want. All the bands are also projected in UTM because uh, this is what we need in CMS. Uh, I'm converting it, converting it in reflectance. And uh, if you have the possibility to remove the effective pixel, by default, it only sets the no data. So it will remove all the black uh, areas. Um, for optical data, the main challenge, I think, and what is behind a reader is that, um, maybe you, you've seen it before, but it's the band mapping between the constellation we are dealing with. Um, and it shows you that some satellites have some bands, and with those bands, you can derive spectral indices. Um, and you don't need to know which band it is. And we'll see example of that later. So um, you can see that the old Landsats don't have a blue band. <laughs> uh, you will see also that uh, some uh, bands are surprisingly uh, mapped with others, like, like the green, green one band of PlanetScope matches the Sentinel-3 band. Whoa, <laughs> this is surprising. Um, I didn't uh, sh uh, show you here the thermal bands. I, I stopped at the three, but yeah, this is a, an overview. And uh, in a mirror of, uh, to spectral data, uh, for SAR data, you can also load, sat load satellite band and dam bands, and the specifications are a bit the same. Uh, always auto-rectified and projecting in UTM, so you cannot uh, do in SAR with a reader. It's not, uh, it's not meant to. Uh, it will always be in DB, and the no data will be set. So uh, a quick example about uh, how you deal um, with data. Uh, from our stereo and uh, from our air reader. Let's say we have three products, different ones, one Landsat 8, one Pleiad, one Sentinel-2, and we want to load the near band. Yeah, and you, do, you just, uh, your boss tells you this, and you have no knowledge about uh, where the band is and so on. Uh, if you see it right, the Landsat 8 is in tar, and the Sentinel-2 is in zip, so it's not extracted. Um, if you are using directly raster stereo, it will be a bit complicated because you oh you you don't see it very well. So sorry, um, but uh, you have ways to uh, to load a tar file in a raster stereo, but you you have to know how. You have to know that the band five of Landsat is the near. Why? Because, um, for example, for Pleiad, it will be the the band four and not five because there is no band five, and it, uh, the bands will be stacked. So you have to read it in another way. Um, for Sentinel-2, it's the eighth band. Uh, and with, with the rush stereo, you won't easily deal with uh, reflectance conversion, no data. Uh, for example, uh, Landsat-8 will be given in DN, the digital, digital number, but uh, Sentinel-2 not. So you have different conversion. And yeah, it's a bit complicated, sorry for that. Uh, for, with a reader, uh, you can just do a loop and load the, all the nears. Uh, it's quite easy <laughs> because I've done all, all the work for you. 
And here you will have the no data that is loaded. Uh, you will have the, the yeah, everything will be in reflectance and so on. Um, what uh, goes uh, out of the prod.load is a X-Array data set. And uh, when you are looking for the nearband in the X-Array data set, it will give you a X-Array data array. Yeah. The state of the art of um, formats. So yeah. <laughs> Um, a, 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 a little recap about the two ways. Um, of course, a reader takes more time. Of course, there is a, a, a bit of overhead. But uh, a reader will deal for you with complicated data paths. Uh, you don't need to know what bond is where, and the same for masks. Uh, you don't need to know how uh, to deal with no data. Uh, what value the no, the no data is, uh, how to scale the bands. Uh, you don't need to worry about the raw units. Um, the same for uh, auto rectification or projection. Um, you, if you want, if you have a, a pipeline that is uh, handling like uh, some some sensors, but you want to add planet, for example. Um, it's easier with a reader because it handles it for you. You won't have to change your code. Uh, whereas if you don't uh, use a reader, you will have to, to add lines, of course. And uh, little more things that uh, a reader can stack um, in a data array, bands for you, and the, 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 the bands will be collocated also. It won't be co-registered, but collocated. Uh, and some other nice features. So this is a bit experimental. Yeah, I hope you will see it right. But you can uh, you can create uh, stack items from uh, product that you load. So you can create catalogs uh, from data on disk uh, in order to yeah just uh, to look for them after. Um, so it's maybe a way to to derive your raw data on disk. Uh, to, and to create nicely a stack catalog, but this is experimental. We are planning to do that in Certit. It's not in production yet, so I won't promise you the moon. Um, you can do also do window reading. So, for example, uh, if you have uh, an ROI uh, in blue, uh, for example, in a yeah, GeoJSON or what, whatever, you can just uh, tell the load function, okay, load me this uh, GeoJSON uh, as a pass or a GeoPanda, and a reader will uh, load the green, uh, the green window right here from the Landsat, uh, the Landsat um, in uh, blue and uh, yellow. So it's easy for you too. And you can also derive some geographical data from the product. So the CRS, they extend the footprint. And if there is a quick look, it will also load it. And you have access to the metadata as a normalized uh, LXML element. So for a um, product that doesn't have any XMLs, it can create it for you. So for certain F3, it will extract some data from the bands and create a LXML. Uh, yeah. And the use case that I was talking about um, uh, previously is, uh, you may have heard it, is the Kakovka Dam Collapse in Ukraine. Um, so we, we worked with uh, NASA Harvest and uh, a bit of planet to uh, extract water over, uh, around the dam. So we had to extract water with Sentinel-3 for fast damage assessment and on a daily basis. We had also accessed the planet scope, but it was like um, uh, a bit after, and uh, you, the processing is is um, yeah is uh, longer. And we had to use also Sentinel-2 for validation. So what we did is to use a reader to apply the exact same algorithm with uh, the sensor agnostic way. So yeah, the same line, lines of code. I just I just told to use the, my algorithm on the products I was giving it. And it it worked like a charm, and yeah, those are the are the results. Uh, you don't see it very well, but right here there is a, a link. So in the in the slide, we'll be able to click on it. So it derived from the communication article that Planet and NASA Harvest made, um, and we extracted the water. They analyzed it, and all thanks to a reader in the end. So I'm a bit proud of it. Um, some highlights about the project. Uh, why in Python? Because uh, yeah, 
Uh, Python has a large community. It's very easy to learn. Um, it has a lot of useful open source scientific libraries. So <laughs> thanks all of you that are coding uh, and uh, giving us the, 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 the opportunity to, to add bricks on top. Um, and in, in started we code in Python, so it was uh, natural. And why in open source? Um, because as I said, uh, we have pipelines, and a reader was uh, a bit hidden in the pipelines, and I said, what, what about uh, promoting it, uh, removing it, and yeah, give, give like a give and take, you know, uh, I'm using open source libraries, so maybe this one has no equivalent in the open source world, so I will just promote it. And yeah, in a way, we are contributing back. And it's a bit of soft power also for Certit that just telling the world that here we can code too, so it's, it's, cool, it's good and it's satisfying. Some highlights. Uh, the project are three years old, maybe only two in open source. We have uh, the 0.20 versions. Um, we, are using in, you are, we are using it in production, so in a constraint environment. So uh, I think this work works pretty well in uh, the most uh, uh, cases. We had a, a success story on Ether Earth Online website, so th that was cool. And I would say that the interest is growing. You don't see it very well, but uh, yeah, the stars have quadrupled in one year, so it, yeah, it, it's good for, for us. Um, the standards, yeah, they are quite, quite uh, common. Uh, I won't go through, but... Uh, what I'm proud maybe is the clear and complete documentation because I, I spent lots of time to just document it. Um, so if you see like uh, uh, errors, typos, uh, things not clear, just write uh, issues on GitHub, please. Uh, our main dependencies, so I will thank all of them. Uh, LXRA, so we are using XRA and Rasterio. GeoPandas, LXML, and Spindex. I don't know if you heard of this library, but it's really cool to compute spectral indices. Um, so thanks to him. Um, and we are using, sadly, the ESA Snap software to deal with Snap, but there is no equivalent in the open source uh, community in Python. So yeah, um, it's, uh, we are forced to do it. And some of the challenges we face, it's to match uh, community and corporate needs and priorities, of course, because uh, sometimes they don't match. We want to, to ensure that the code is working on uh, Linux and Windows. And we have to master the dependency, of course, because uh, of a matter of security. And we don't want any exponential growth in the dependencies. For the future, we want, of course, to get rid of non-Python tools, but it will be very difficult. And we want to make sure the code is optimized, uh, because now it works, but we know that it's not optimized. So yeah, in a, in a cloud environment, for example, we, don't, we didn't have tested it right now. We plan to use uh, to test on Microsoft Planetary Computer, for example, but there are there a lot of questions. It's very designed for our wrapping mapping approach for now, but maybe it, is, it will be easy to optimize, I don't know. And of course, we want to uh, implement all the CMS sensors. Um, lots of them will arrive in the near future, so I will be, uh, I will be on deck, I think. Thank you.